The Meiji Period and the Renewal of the Ming Dynasty The Meiji Period and the Renewal of the Ming Dynasty were two significant periods of change and transformation in the histories of Japan and China, respectively. Both periods were marked by profound Hongus in politics, economics, society, and culture that transformed these nations and set them on a new path towards modernization. Hongus in politics, economics, society, and culture that transformed these nations and set them on a new path towards modernization. The Meiji period in Japan began in 1868 and lasted until 1912 during which Japan underwent a significant transformation from a feudal and isolated society to a modern and industrialized nation. The Eiji Restoration was a movement led by a group of samurai and other elites who sought to overthrow the ruling shogunate and restore power to the emperor. The new government that emerged was committed. Eiji Restoration was a movement led by a group of samurai and other elites who sought to overthrow the ruling shogunate and restore power to the emperor. The new government that emerged was committed to modernization and westernization, and they sought to transform Japan into a strong and modern nation that could compete with the Western powers. One of the most significant changes that occurred during the Meiji period was the abolition of the feudal system. The samurai class, which had previously held power, was abolished and a new system O. Government was established based on a Western-style constitution. The new government also implemented policies to modernize Japan's economy, including the establishment of a national banking system. Government was established based on a Western-style constitution. The new government also implemented policies to modernize Japan's economy, including the establishment of a national banking system. The building of railroads and telegraph lines, and the promotion of industry and trade. Another significant change that occurred during the Meiji period was the opening of Japan to the world. For centuries, Japan had been a closed society, with limited contact with the outside world. Ho. Ever, during the Meiji period, Japan began to establish diplomatic and trade relations with other nations. The government sent diplomats and scholars to study in Europe and America, and they brought Ever, during the Meiji period, Japan began to establish diplomatic and trade relations with other nations. The government sent diplomats and scholars to study in Europe and America, and they brought Act knowledge and ideas that would help to modernize Japan. The Meiji period also witnessed significant cultural changes. The traditional Japanese arts, such as kabuki theater and ukiyo-e prints, underwent a transformation as they were influenced by Western A. T and culture. Western-style clothing, hairstyles, and customs became fashionable among the Japanese elite, and the Japanese language was reformed to make it more suitable for modern purposes. Tea and culture. Western-style clothing, hairstyles, and customs became fashionable among the Japanese elite, and the Japanese language was reformed to make it more suitable for modern purposes. The renewal of the Ming Dynasty in China was a period of political and cultural reform that occurred during the late 16th century. The Ming Dynasty had been in decline for several decades, and the M. Era Wanli, who ruled from 1572 to 1620, sought to revitalize the dynasty and restore its power and prestige. Era Wanli, who ruled from 1572 to 1620, sought to revitalize the dynasty and restore its power and prestige. One of the most significant changes that occurred during the renewal of the Ming dynasty was the establishment of a new system of government. Wanli reformed the bureaucracy, reducing the power of the eunuchs who had previously held great influence in the government. He also reformed the tax system and promoted agriculture and industry, which helped to increase the wealth and stability of the MP. 
eunuchs who had previously held great influence in the government. He also reformed the tax system and promoted agriculture and industry, which helped to increase the wealth and stability of the MP. E. Another significant change that occurred during the renewal of the Ming dynasty was the promotion of Confucianism as the official state ideology. Confucianism had been a dominant philosophy in China for centuries, but during the Ming dynasty, it was elevated to a position of prominence. The Emperor Wanli and his advisors believed that Confucianism provided a moral framework for society and would for centuries, but during the Ming dynasty, it was elevated to a position of prominence. The Emperor Wanli and his advisors believed that Confucianism provided a moral framework for society and would help to promote social stability and order. The renewal of the Ming dynasty also witnessed significant cultural changes. The arts and literature flourished during this period, with a renewed interest in the classics of Chinese literature. Arty T.S. and poets experimented with new styles and techniques, and the imperial court became a center of artistic and cultural patronage. T.S. and poets experimented with new styles and techniques, and the imperial court became a center of artistic and cultural patronage. Despite the significant changes that occurred during the Meiji period and the renewal of the Ming dynasty, both periods were marked by challenges and difficulties. In Japan, the modernization process led to social and economic upheaval, as traditional ways of life were disrupted, and new economic and social structures were established. Led to social and economic upheaval, as traditional ways of life were disrupted, and new economic and social structures were established. In China, the renewal of the Ming dynasty was marked by conflicts and political instability. Despite Wanli's efforts to reform the bureaucracy and reduce the power of the eunuchs, corruption and fact. Onlism continued to plague the government. The dynasty was also threatened by external forces, including the expansion of the Manchu Qing dynasty to the north. Onlism continued to plague the government. The dynasty was also threatened by external forces, including the expansion of the Manchu Qing dynasty to the north. Similarly, in Japan, the Meiji period faced challenges and opposition, both from within the government and from outside forces. The government's rapid modernization and westernization policies led to discontent among traditionalists who felt that Japan's unique culture and traditions were being threatened. Japan's growing power also put it at odds with other imperial powers, including Russia and discontent among traditionalists who felt that Japan's unique culture and traditions were being threatened. Japan's growing power also put it at odds with other imperial powers, including Russia and The United States, leading to conflicts such as the Russo-Japanese War in 1904. Despite these challenges, both periods were marked by significant achievements and innovations. In Japan, the Meiji period saw the development of a modern industrial economy, with factories, mines, a detransportation infrastructure that fueled Japan's rise as a major world power. The period also saw significant advances in education and healthcare, which improved the lives of many Japanese people. Detransportation infrastructure that fueled Japan's rise as a major world power. The period also saw significant advances in education and healthcare, which improved the lives of many Japanese people. In China, the renewal of the Ming dynasty led to significant advances in science and technology. The invention of the water clock and the development of astronomy and mathematics were among the many achievements of this period. The period also saw the construction of significant engineering works, including the Grand Canal and the Great Wall, which helped to promote trade and security in China. 
achievements of this period. The period also saw the construction of significant engineering works, including the Grand Canal and the Great Wall, which helped to promote trade and security in China. The Meiji period and the renewal of the Ming Dynasty were also marked by significant cultural exchanges and influences. In Japan, the introduction of Western culture and ideas led to a transformation of traditional Japanese arts and literature, with new styles and techniques emerging that combined Eastern and Western influences. Similarly, in China, the promotion of Confucianism and the emphasis of traditional Japanese arts and literature, with new styles and techniques emerging that combined Eastern and Western influences. Similarly, in China, the promotion of Confucianism and the emphasis and classical Chinese literature led to a renewed interest in traditional arts and culture. In conclusion, the Meiji period and the renewal of the Ming Dynasty were two significant periods of change and transformation in the histories of Japan and China, respectively. Both periods were marked d by significant challenges and achievements, as well as cultural exchanges and influences. Despite facing opposition and difficulties, both Japan and China emerged from these periods as modern and p. d by significant challenges and achievements, as well as cultural exchanges and influences. Despite facing opposition and difficulties, both Japan and China emerged from these periods as modern and p. Wearful nations, with rich cultural and historical legacies that continue to shape their identities and societies today. Despite the similarities between the Meiji period and the renewal of the Ming Dynasty, there were also significant differences between the two periods. One of the most notable differences was in the The Rise of China's Automotive Industry The automotive industry in China has undergone a significant transformation in the last few decades. From a negligible presence in the global automobile market, China has emerged as the world's large T automotive market and manufacturer. The growth of the Chinese automotive industry has been nothing short of remarkable, and it has been achieved through a combination of government policies, for a T automotive market and manufacturer. The growth of the Chinese automotive industry has been nothing short of remarkable, and it has been achieved through a combination of government policies, for a investment, and the entrepreneurship of local companies. The first automobiles in China were imported from Europe in the early 20th century. However, the country lacked the infrastructure and technical expertise to develop its own automobile industry. This changed in the 1950s when China started manufacturing its own vehicles, primarily for military use. However, these vehicles were rudimentary and not fit for civilian use. Changed in the 1950s when China started manufacturing its own vehicles, primarily for military use. However, these vehicles were rudimentary and not fit for civilian use. The real change came in the late 1970s, when China started opening up its economy and attracting foreign investment. One of the first foreign automakers to enter China was Volkswagen, which established D a joint venture with a local company to produce cars in Shanghai. This was followed by joint ventures with other foreign automakers such as General Motors, Ford and Toyota. D a joint venture with a local company to produce cars in Shanghai. This was followed by joint ventures with other foreign automakers such as General Motors, Ford and Toyota. The Chinese government played a crucial role in the development of the automotive industry by offering incentives to foreign companies to invest in China. These incentives included tax breaks, Lanji, ants, and access to cheap labor. The government also encouraged foreign companies to transfer technology to local partners. Ants, and access to cheap labor. The government also encouraged foreign companies to transfer technology to local partners. 
The joint ventures between foreign and local companies help China develop its automotive industry by bringing in new technologies, processes, and management practices. The local partners provided M. Bricket knowledge and access to distribution channels, while the foreign companies provided capital, technology, and global branding. Bricket knowledge and access to distribution channels, while the foreign companies provided capital, technology, and global branding. As the Chinese economy grew, so did the demand for automobiles. The country's rising middle class wanted cars for personal use and the government encouraged car ownership as a symbol of economic pro. Res. This led to a surge in automobile sales in China, making it the world's largest automotive market. Res. This led to a surge in automobile sales in China, making it the world's largest automotive market. The local Chinese companies also started to play an increasingly important role in the industry. One such company is Geely which was founded in 1986 as a refrigerator manufacturer. In the 1990s, the company started producing motorcycles and then expanded into automobiles. Today, Geely is one of China's largest automakers and owns several international brands such as Volvo, Lotus, and Link & Co. Company started producing motorcycles and then expanded into automobiles. Today, Geely is one of China's largest automakers and owns several international brands such as Volvo, Lotus, and Link & Co. Another Chinese company that has made a mark in the industry is BYD. Founded in 1995, BYD started as a battery manufacturer and then diversified into automobiles. The company's focus on electric vehi. Lei has made it a leader in the segment and it has also expanded into other areas such as energy storage and solar power. Lei has made it a leader in the segment, and it has also expanded into other areas such as energy storage and solar power. The success of local Chinese companies has been helped by government policies that support domestic players. For example, the government has set up a national champion program to identify and support companies that have the potential to become global leaders. This has led to the creation of companies such as Saic, Chang'an, and Great Wall Motors. Companies that have the potential to become global leaders. This has led to the creation of companies such as Saic, Chang'an, and Great Wall Motors. The rise of the Chinese automotive industry has not been without its challenges. One of the biggest challenges has been the quality of Chinese-made cars. In the early days, Chinese cars had a reputed on for being unreliable and unsafe. This perception has changed in recent years, as local companies have invested heavily in quality control and design. On for being unreliable and unsafe. This perception has changed in recent years, as local companies have invested heavily in quality control and design. Another challenge has been the issue of intellectual property theft. Foreign companies have accused Chinese firms of stealing their technology and designs. This has led to legal disputes and tensions between China and other countries. However, the Chinese government has taken steps to address this issue, and local companies are now investing more in research and development. Between China and other countries However, the Chinese government has taken steps to address this issue, and local companies are now investing more in research and development. The Chinese government has also implemented policies to promote the adoption of electric vehicles. These policies include subsidies for buyers of electric vehicles and a requirement for automakers to produce a certain percentage of electric vehicles in their lineup. Produce a certain percentage of electric vehicles in their lineup. China's focus on electric vehicles has not only created a huge domestic market but has also made it a global leader in the segment. Chinese automakers are now exporting electric vehicles to other coup. Tries, including Europe and North America. Tries, including Europe and North America. In addition to electric vehicles, 
China's automotive industry is also making strides in other areas such as autonomous driving and connectivity. Local companies such as Baidu and Tencent are investing heavily in these areas, and Chinese automakers are collaborating with these companies to develop new technologies. Heavily in these areas, and Chinese automakers are collaborating with these companies to develop new technologies. The rise of China's automotive industry has also had an impact on the global automotive market. China is now the largest market for several global automakers, and the country's demand for cars has he. Ped drive growth in the industry. However, China's rise has also created new challenges for the global automotive industry, including increased competition and changing trade dynamics. Ped drive growth in the industry. However, China's rise has also created new challenges for the global automotive industry, including increased competition and changing trade dynamics. One of the key factors driving the growth of China's automotive industry is its large and rapidly growing middle class. As incomes have risen in China, so has the demand for cars. The country's middle class is expected to continue to grow which will provide a significant boost to the automotive industry. Class is expected to continue to grow, which will provide a significant boost to the automotive industry. Another factor driving the growth of the Chinese automotive industry is the country's large population. With a population of over 1.4 billion, China has a huge potential market for automobiles. This has attracted foreign automakers to invest in the country, and has also created opportunities for local companies. Has attracted foreign automakers to invest in the country, and has also created opportunities for local companies. The Chinese government's focus on developing the country's automotive industry has also had a significant impact. The government has implemented policies to encourage investment in the industry and has also supported the development of domestic companies. This has helped China become a major player in the global automotive industry. Has also supported the development of domestic companies. This has helped China become a major player in the global automotive industry. However, China's rise has also created new challenges for the global automotive industry. As Chinese companies have become more competitive, they have started to expand overseas. This has led to incur as competition for global automakers, who must now compete with Chinese companies in their home markets. As competition for global automakers, who must now compete with Chinese companies in their home markets. Another challenge for the global automotive industry is the changing trade dynamics. China's rise as an automotive powerhouse has led to tensions with other countries, particularly the United States. The Development and Change of Education in the Qing Dynasty Period The Qing Dynasty Period in China, spanning from 1644 to 1911, was marked by significant developments and changes in education. During this time, China saw the emergence of a new educational system th. T was heavily influenced by Confucianism, the dominant philosophy of the time. In this passage, we will explore the development and changes in education during the Qing Dynasty period. T was heavily influenced by Confucianism, the dominant philosophy of the time. In this passage, we will explore the development and changes in education during the Qing Dynasty period. Early Qing Dynasty Education During the early Qing Dynasty period, Education in China was mostly confined to the elite class, which included the imperial family, nobles, and wealthy merchants. These individuals had access to pre. Eight tutors who taught them the classics of Confucianism, such as the Analects, the Great Learning, and the Doctrine of the Mean. These classics were seen as the foundation of knowledge and morality I. Eight tutors who taught them the classics of Confucianism, such as the Analects, the Great Learning, 
and the doctrine of the mean. These classics were seen as the foundation of knowledge and morality I. Chinese Society One of the most significant developments in education during the early Qing dynasty was the establishment of the Imperial Academy in 1661. The academy was intended to train officials for the imperial government, and it became the most prestigious institution of higher learning in China. The curriculum at the academy emphasized the classics of Confucianism, as well as Chinese history, poetry, and government, and it became the most prestigious institution of higher learning in China. The curriculum at the academy emphasized the classics of Confucianism, as well as Chinese history, poetry, and calligraphy. During this period, the imperial government also established the provincial-level schools, known as prefectural schools, to provide education to the broader population. These schools were intended to produce officials for the imperial bureaucracy and focused on the same curriculum as the imperial academy. Produce officials for the imperial bureaucracy and focused on the same curriculum as the imperial academy. The growth of education in the mid to late Qing dynasty. In the mid to late Qing dynasty period, education began to expand beyond the elite class, and the number of schools in China increased significantly. The government established primary schools in Man. Cities, providing basic education to the masses. These schools taught reading, writing, and arithmetic and were often run by private individuals or organizations. Cities, providing basic education to the masses. These schools taught reading, writing, and arithmetic and were often run by private individuals or organizations. In addition to primary schools, the mid to late Qing dynasty saw the emergence of specialized schools, such as medical schools, engineering schools, and military academies. These schools were intended to provide education and training for specific professions and were often sponsored by the government or wealthy individuals. To provide education and training for specific professions and were often sponsored by the government or wealthy individuals. The most significant change in education during this period was the introduction of Western-style education in China. This began with the establishment of the Tungwenguan School in 1861, which was founded by the government to teach foreign languages and Western sciences. The Tungwenguan School was the first institution of its kind in China and marked a significant shift away from traditional co. Founded by the government to teach foreign languages and Western sciences. The Tungwenguan School was the first institution of its kind in China and marked a significant shift away from traditional co. Fusion Education Following the establishment of the Tungwenguan School, many other Western-style schools were established in China, both by the government and by private individuals. These schools taught a wide range of subjects, including mathematics, physics, chemistry, and biology, as well as foreign languages such as English and French. Of subjects, including mathematics, physics, chemistry, and biology, as well as foreign languages such as English and French. Challenges to traditional education The growth of Western-style education in China during the Qing dynasty period was not without its challenges. Many traditionalists saw the introduction of Western education as a threat to traditional Chinese culture and values. Confucian scholars argued that Western education emphasized individualism and materialism, which went against the collectivist and spiritual values of Confucianism. Chinese Culture and Values Confucian scholars argued that Western education emphasized individualism and materialism, which went against the collectivist and spiritual values of Confucianism. Additionally, 
There was a widespread belief that the study of Western sciences and technology would lead to a loss of Chinese identity and sovereignty. This fear was fueled by the fact that many West RN countries were colonizing Asian countries at the time. RN countries were colonizing Asian countries at the time. Despite these challenges, Western style education continued to grow in popularity, and many Chinese students began to travel to Europe and the United States to study at universities. These students be came known as the returned students, and they played an important role in the modernization of China in the early 20th century. Came known as the returned students, and they played an important role in the modernization of China in the early 20th century. By the late Qing dynasty period, there was growing awareness that traditional Confucian education alone could no longer meet the needs of a rapidly changing society. In response, the imperial government NT implemented a series of reforms aimed at modernizing the education system. NT implemented a series of reforms aimed at modernizing the education system. One of the most significant reforms was the establishment of the Ministry of Education in 1901. The ministry was responsible for overseeing all aspects of education in China from primary schools to universities. The establishment of the ministry signaled a shift towards a more centralized and standardized approach to education. Universities. The establishment of the ministry signaled a shift towards a more centralized and standardized approach to education. Another major reform was the introduction of a new curriculum that combined traditional Chinese learning with Western sciences and technology. This new curriculum, known as the New Learning or SIN. UE, aimed to create a new generation of students who were proficient in both Chinese classics and Western knowledge. UE, aimed to create a new generation of students who were proficient in both Chinese classics and Western knowledge. The new learning curriculum included subjects such as mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, and geography, as well as courses on foreign languages and history. The introduction of these subjects as intended to equip students with the knowledge and skills needed to modernize China and compete with the Western powers. As intended to equip students with the knowledge and skills needed to modernize China and compete with the Western powers. The reform of the education system also included changes to the way exams were conducted. In traditional Confucian education, exams were the primary means of selecting officials for the imperial beret. Ocracy. However, these exams were based on rote memorization of the classics and did not test students' ability to think critically or apply their knowledge. Ocracy. However, these exams were based on rote memorization of the classics and did not test students' ability to think critically or apply their knowledge. To address this issue, the government introduced new exam formats that tested students' knowledge of both Chinese classics and Western knowledge. These new exams included essay questions and required students to demonstrate their ability to think critically and analyze complex issues. Students to demonstrate their ability to think critically and analyze complex issues. Impact of Education Reforms The reforms to the education system had a significant impact on Chinese society and culture. The introduction of Western-style education and the new learning curriculum helped to create a new generate. Policies adopted during the Three Kingdoms period and their impact on Chinese history. The Three Kingdoms period is a significant period in Chinese history that lasted from 220 to 280 AD. During this period, 
China was divided into three kingdoms, namely Wei, Shu, and Wu. This division As the result of the collapse of the Han Dynasty, and it marked a significant turning point in the country's history. Many policies were adopted during the Three Kingdoms period, and they had a signi. As the result of the collapse of the Han Dynasty, and it marked a significant turning point in the country's history. Many policies were adopted during the Three Kingdoms period, and they had a signi. It can impact on Chinese history. In this passage, we will discuss some of the most notable policies of the Three Kingdoms period and their impact on Chinese history. One of the most significant policies of the Three Kingdoms period was the establishment of a centralized bureaucracy. The Han Dynasty had already established a centralized bureaucracy, but the Three Kingdoms took it to another level. Each of the Three Kingdoms had a well organized bureaucracy with officials appointed based on merit. This merit-based system meant that anyone, regardless of their kingdoms took it to another level. Each of the three kingdoms had a well-organized bureaucracy, with officials appointed based on merit. This merit-based system meant that anyone, regardless of their social status or background, could become a government official as long as they were capable and qualified. This policy helped to strengthen the government and ensure that the best people were chosen. Another policy that was adopted during the Three Kingdoms period was the promotion of Confucianism. Confucianism had been a prominent philosophy in China for centuries, but during the Three Kingdoms period, it was promoted to an official state ideology. The Three Kingdoms all recognized the importance of Confucianism in maintaining social order and stability, and they all sought to promote it in. Period, it was promoted to an official state ideology. The Three Kingdoms all recognized the importance of Confucianism in maintaining social order and stability, and they all sought to promote it in. Air Territories Confucianism emphasized the importance of education, morality, and social order, and these values were reflected in the policies of the Three Kingdoms. This policy helped to reinforce The Three Kingdoms period also saw the development of a system of land distribution. During the Han Dynasty, land was distributed based on social status, and the wealthy elite held most of the land. However, during the Three Kingdoms period, a new system was developed where land was distributed based on need. This system ensured that everyone had access to land, regardless of their social status. However, during the Three Kingdoms period, a new system was developed where land was distributed based on need. This system ensured that everyone had access to land, regardless of their social status. Our wealth. This policy helped to reduce social inequality and ensure that everyone had a chance to make a living. One of the most significant policies of the Three Kingdoms period was the development of military tactics and strategies. The Three Kingdoms were constantly at war with each other, and this led to th. Development of new military tactics and strategies. The most notable of these was the empty fort strategy developed by Zhuge Liang of Shu. This strategy involved leaving the gates of a fortress up. Development of new military tactics and strategies. The most notable of these was the empty fort strategy developed by Zhuge Liang of Shu. This strategy involved leaving the gates of a fortress up. And in appearing weak and vulnerable to the enemy. This would lure the enemy into attacking, and then the defenders would launch a surprise attack and defeat them. This strategy was very effective and The Three Kingdoms period also saw the development of new agricultural techniques. The Three Kingdoms all recognized the importance of agriculture in maintaining the country's economy, and they all s. 
UD to develop new techniques to increase agricultural productivity. The most notable of these was the development of the iron plow. The iron plow was much more effective than the wooden plow that age. UD to develop new techniques to increase agricultural productivity. The most notable of these was the development of the iron plow. The iron plow was much more effective than the wooden plow that age. D been used previously, and it helped to increase agricultural productivity significantly. This policy helped to ensure that the country's economy remained stable and that the people had enough food. The Three Kingdoms period also saw the development of new literary styles. The most notable of these was the development of the Janan literature style. This literary style emphasized simplicity a D. Directness in writing had a significant impact on Chinese literature. Many famous poets and writers emerged. D. Directness in writing had a significant impact on Chinese literature. Many famous poets and writers emerged. During this period, such as Cao Cao and Liu Bei, who both wrote poetry and prose in the Jinan style, this literary style was popular during the Three Kingdoms period and had a lasting impact on Qi. Essay Literature Essay Literature In addition to the policies discussed above, the Three Kingdoms period also saw the development of new technologies. The Three Kingdoms all recognized the importance of technology in maintaining the eye. military and economic power, and they all sought to develop new technologies to gain an advantage over their rivals. One of the most notable of these was the development of gunpowder. Gunpowder was military and economic power, and they all sought to develop new technologies to gain an advantage over their rivals. One of the most notable of these was the development of gunpowder. Gunpowder was Set in fireworks during this period, but it was also used in military applications, such as in bombs and grenades. This development had a significant impact on Chinese military history and influenced. Another significant policy of the Three Kingdoms period was the promotion of Buddhism. Buddhism had been introduced to China during the Han Dynasty, but it was not until the Three Kingdoms period the It became widely popular. The Three Kingdoms all recognized the importance of Buddhism in maintaining social order and stability, and they all sought to promote it in their territories. Buddhism Emph. It became widely popular. The Three Kingdoms all recognized the importance of Buddhism in maintaining social order and stability, and they all sought to promote it in their territories. Buddhism Emph. Assize compassion, morality, and self-discipline, and these values were reflected in the policies of the Three Kingdoms. This policy helped to reinforce social order and ensure that the people were M. The Three Kingdoms period also saw the development of new trade routes. The Three Kingdoms were all located in different parts of China, and they all had access to different resources. This led to TH. development of new trade routes that connected the three kingdoms and allowed for the exchange of goods and ideas. The most notable of these was the Maritime Silk Road, which connected China with development of new trade routes that connected the three kingdoms and allowed for the exchange of goods and ideas. The most notable of these was the Maritime Silk Road, which connected China with Southeast Asia, India, and the Middle East. This trade route had a significant impact on Chinese history and influenced the development of trade routes in later periods. The policies adopted during the Three Kingdoms period had a significant impact on Chinese history. The establishment of a centralized bureaucracy, the promotion of Confucianism and Buddhism, the Deve. 
augment of military tactics and strategies, and the promotion of agriculture and technology all helped to strengthen the country and ensure that it remained stable and prosperous. These policies also augment of military tactics and strategies, and the promotion of agriculture and technology all helped to strengthen the country and ensure that it remained stable and prosperous. These policies also influence the development of Chinese culture and society in later periods. In conclusion, the Three Kingdoms period was a significant period in Chinese history that saw the adoption of many important policies. These policies had a significant impact on Chinese history and I. Fluence the development of Chinese culture and society in later periods. The establishment of a centralized bureaucracy, the promotion of Confucianism and Buddhism, the development of military tactile. Fluence the development of Chinese culture and society in later periods. The establishment of a centralized bureaucracy, the promotion of Confucianism and Buddhism, the development of military tactile. S and strategies and the promotion of agriculture and technology all helped to ensure that China remained stable and prosperous during this period. The Three Kingdoms period was a time of great Chan. Moreover, the Three Kingdoms period also saw the development of new forms of art and music. The Three Kingdoms all recognized the importance of art and music in promoting culture and entertainment, a. Eh? D. They all sought to develop new forms of art and music that reflected the values and traditions of their respective territories. The most notable of these was the development of the Sanko style of D. They all sought to develop new forms of art and music that reflected the values and traditions of their respective territories. The most notable of these was the development of the Sanko style of Music Sank was a popular form of music that combined poetry and music and was often performed in tea houses and other public spaces. This style of music was popular during the Three Kingdoms period. Another significant policy of the Three Kingdoms period was the development of the civil service examination system. The civil service examination system was a system of examinations that tested the Knowledge and ability of individuals who wish to become government officials. This system was adopted during the Three Kingdoms period and was based on the Confucian principles of education and Mary. Knowledge and ability of individuals who wish to become government officials. This system was adopted during the Three Kingdoms period and was based on the Confucian principles of education and Mary. The system was designed to ensure that the best and brightest individuals were chosen to run the government, regardless of their social status or background. This policy helped to reinforce the imp. The Three Kingdoms period also saw the development of new architectural styles. The Three Kingdoms all recognized the importance of architecture in promoting culture and tradition, and they all saw. The Rise of the Shanghai Special Economic Zone The Shanghai Special Economic Zone, says, is a landmark in China's economic transformation, marking the country's opening up to the world and embracing of market-oriented reforms. The Rise of Shanghai As a global economic powerhouse is a result of the establishment of the Shanghai says and the liberalization of China's economy that followed. In this passage, we will explore the history of the Shang. As a global economic powerhouse is a result of the establishment of the Shanghai says and the liberalization of China's economy that followed. In this passage, we will explore the history of the Shang. I says, the factors that contributed to its success and its impact on China's economic development. The establishment of the Shanghai says in 1980 was a significant turning point in China's economic development. 
At the time, China was still a closed economy with a centrally planned economic system. He country was facing economic stagnation, and the government recognized the need for change. Deng Xiaoping, the architect of China's economic reforms, believed that opening up the economy to foreign. He country was facing economic stagnation, and the government recognized the need for change. Deng Xiaoping, the architect of China's economic reforms, believed that opening up the economy to foreign. Investment and trade would provide a much-needed boost to the economy. The Shanghai says was one of the first experiments in market-oriented reforms in China. It was established in a four-square-kilometer area in the Pudong New Area, which was then a swampy and undeveloped. Art of Shanghai The zone was designed to attract foreign investment and promote export-oriented industries. The government provided tax incentives and streamlined bureaucratic procedures to attract. Art of Shanghai The zone was designed to attract foreign investment and promote export-oriented industries. The government provided tax incentives and streamlined bureaucratic procedures to attract. Foreign Investors The Shanghai says was an immediate success, attracting a large number of foreign investors. The zone became a hub for export-oriented industries, particularly electronics and textiles. The government Decision to allow foreign companies to set up joint ventures with Chinese companies was crucial in attracting foreign investment. Foreign companies were able to tap into China's vast pool of cheap L. Decision to allow foreign companies to set up joint ventures with Chinese companies was crucial in attracting foreign investment. Foreign companies were able to tap into China's vast pool of cheap L. Bore while Chinese companies gained access to new technologies and management practices. The success of the Shanghai says paved the way for the establishment of other says in China. Today, there are over 200 says in China, and they have played a critical role in China's economic growth. S. ZS have been instrumental in attracting foreign investment, promoting exports, and developing China's manufacturing sector. ZS have been instrumental in attracting foreign investment, promoting exports, and developing China's manufacturing sector. One of the key factors that contributed to the success of the Shanghai says was the government's willingness to experiment with market-oriented reforms. The government recognized that the centrally PL. An economic system was not working and that China needed to embrace market-oriented reforms. The Shanghai says was a testing ground for these reforms, and the government was willing to take risks in. An economic system was not working and that China needed to embrace market-oriented reforms. The Shanghai says was a testing ground for these reforms, and the government was willing to take risks in. Experiment with new policies Another factor that contributed to the success of the Shanghai says was its location. Shanghai is one of China's most developed cities and is strategically located at the mouth of the Yangtze River. T. Its location made it easy for goods to be transported in and out of the city. Shanghai's proximity to other major cities in China also made it an attractive location for foreign investors. Its location made it easy for goods to be transported in and out of the city. Shanghai's proximity to other major cities in China also made it an attractive location for foreign investors. The government's commitment to developing infrastructure in the Pudong New Area was also critical in the success of the Shanghai says. The government invested heavily in building roads, bridges and O. Oh. Her infrastructure to support the growth of the zone. The government also developed the Shanghai Pudong International Airport, which has become one of the busiest airports in the world. Her infrastructure to support the growth of the zone. The government also developed the Shanghai Pudong International Airport, which has become one of the busiest airports in the world. The success of the Shanghai says had a significant impact on China's economic development. The zone attracted a large amount of foreign investment which helped to modernize China's economy and bring and new technologies and management practices. 
The success of the Shanghai says also encouraged other parts of China to embrace market-oriented reforms and attract foreign investment. And new technologies and management practices. The success of the Shanghai says also encouraged other parts of China to embrace market-oriented reforms and attract foreign investment. The Shanghai says has played a critical role in China's economic transformation. It has been instrumental in attracting foreign investment, promoting exports, and developing China's manufacturing sect. R. The success of the Shanghai says has been a model for other says in China and has helped to transform China into a global economic powerhouse. R. The success of the Shanghai says has been a model for other says in China and has helped to transform China into a global economic powerhouse. Despite the success of the Shanghai says, there have been challenges and criticisms of the zone. One criticism is that the zone has contributed to income inequality in China. While the zone has created wealth and opportunities for many, it has also widened the gap between the rich and poor. The government has responded to this criticism by implementing policies to address income inequality and pro wealth and opportunities for many. It has also widened the gap between the rich and poor. The government has responded to this criticism by implementing policies to address income inequality and pro. A T more inclusive growth. Another challenge facing the Shanghai says is increasing competition from other says in China and other countries. Many other countries have followed China's example and established says to attract foe. Ain investment and promote economic development. To stay competitive, the Shanghai says must continue to innovate and develop new strategies to attract investment and promote growth. Ain investment and promote economic development. To stay competitive, the Shanghai says must continue to innovate and develop new strategies to attract investment and promote growth. Despite these challenges. The Shanghai says remains a vital part of China's economy and a symbol of the country's transformation. The zone has been instrumental in China's rise to become a global econ. Mike Powerhouse and its success has inspired similar developments in other parts of the world. Mike Powerhouse and its success has inspired similar developments in other parts of the world. Looking ahead. The Shanghai says will continue to play a critical role in China's economic development. The Chinese government has announced plans to expand the zone and make it a key hub for innovati. N and technology development. The government has also announced plans to promote more sustainable and environmentally friendly development in the zone. N and technology development. The government has also announced plans to promote more sustainable and environmentally friendly development in the zone. In conclusion, the rise of the Shanghai Special Economic Zone has been a significant turning point in China's economic development. The establishment of the zone marked a departure from China's center. Li planned economic system and a move towards market-oriented reforms. The success of the Shanghai says has been a model for other says in China and around the world, despite challenges and criticism. Li planned economic system and a move towards market-oriented reforms. The success of the Shanghai says has been a model for other says in China and around the world, despite challenges and criticism. The Shanghai says remains a vital part of China's economy and a symbol of the country's transformation. As China continues to develop and grow, the Shanghai says will continue to play a critical role. The Shanghai says has not only been instrumental in China's economic development, but it has also had a significant impact on the global economy. The zone has helped to integrate China into the global economy, promoting trade and investment between China and other countries. The success of the Shanghai says has also encouraged other countries to establish their own says and embrace market-oriented economy, promoting trade and investment between China and other countries. The success of the Shanghai says has also encouraged other countries to establish their own says and embrace market-oriented forms. 
The Shanghai CES has become a key player in the global supply chain, particularly in the electronics and manufacturing industries. The zone has attracted major multinational corporations, such as Int. L, Volkswagen, and General Motors, which have set up manufacturing facilities in the zone. These companies have benefited from the zone's favorable business environment and access to China's vast pool. L, Volkswagen, and General Motors, which have set up manufacturing facilities in the zone. These companies have benefited from the zone's favorable business environment and access to China's vast pool.